Well, hello and welcome back. This is Joni here at Joni's Journals. How are you today? Mm, just had to grab a drink. Um, in our last video, we created this cute little treat bag using papers from Tracy Fox's Festive Compendium Kit, which I will link in the description box below. And we put it all together. Remember, we goofed up the back here, but you can see no damage, no visible damage anyway. We all know what it looked like when I tried to tear it off to correct my boo-boo. We are back because we're going to decorate this today. Now, I'm going to show you some of the ones that I've been working on. If you remember in my other video, I explained to you that I got this idea from Annette Green, who is a designer with Elizabeth Craft Designs. And I had created one using her exact dimensions, but then I developed one that was a little bit smaller um, so that we could use an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Hers uses a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock, um, which as you can see, it comes out kind of cute. I glued the um, papers from the kit onto the bag, but it made it a little stiff. So that's why I went back and I developed a way to do it. Um, using her original idea, I made one that we could use an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Now you can see that what I did, if you look at the last video, you may remember that this was plain white. And what I did was I added some Christmas ribbon or yeah, Christmas ribbon that I had laying around that I had for a couple of years now. I had gone to Michael's at the end of the season um, when they had their 50% off sale. And I used um, a little bead, string bead, bead string, I don't know what you would call it, and I glued it on. I, of course, I had to pull out old Stinky, uh, the Fabri-Tac. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes we have to do that. And I added these little water droplet crystals. I don't know if you can actually see them. I'm hoping you can see them on the video. And they are these, and I bought them on Amazon because I want to, well, not I want to, but I always make Christmas cards. And so I figured these little um, water droplets would add just a little something, something. So yeah, that's what I did on this one. I added the little mouse and the little water droplets. I took one of Tracy's sayings, uh, which are in the kit and they come, you know, like this, the strips, and you just cut them up. And so I added one of those, uh, this one's magical time of the year. And yeah, I just decorated it up a little, just gave it a little something, something. Um, this is one, this was actually one of that, this was the one that I put the flap on backwards. This was supposed to be the front of the treat bag and I ended up putting it on backwards and so the other side became the front and you can see I did the same thing I used a little baker's twine and I used one of the round tags out of the kit and same as the others I added some of the little water droplets on the little water droplet beads and just a strip of the beaded string I didn't use any of the regular ribbon on here and so, yeah, it, it just gives it a little something. It just makes it a little bit cuter. And it takes, I don't know, less than five minutes. And this is another one. This is the one with the little mouse. Just a few little water droplets. I cut up some of the um, saying strips and a little one of the little round tags, which I just want to show you. I punch a hole in it, and then I put a reinforcer on the back. Um to keep the tag from coming off of the string, you know, from in and out daily abuse. Okay. And then let's see, I do have, oh, I showed you that one. And then I have this little one, which again, I used some of the little string beads and some of the water droplets. And I cut out one of the little mice from the kit and another one of the tags 
So yeah, they're really easy to decorate and just make them look a little bit more special. So I thought that we would work on decorating this one today. And let me just put these all on the side here and see what we can do. As you can tell, my husband is home and he's watching the football game. <laughs> So it's a little loud in here, all right? What I did was I tried to make the colors seem almost exact. Well, you know, at least coordinated. And what I'm doing is I'm just loosening up the string here. I am gonna tie this end. This is the loop end, just so that the string stays together. I just wanna give it a little loop. Here, I'll show you where I did it on the other ones. I tied both ends. This is the loop end, and then this is the loose end. You can see how it frays just a bit, but that's how I put my little tag on, and I'll show you how to do that as we go along. So I just wanna open it up and kind of flatten out the treat bag a bit, okay? I'm not gonna take the string out but I am just gonna try and straighten out the bag a little bit. It'll make it easier for us once we start gluing things on. All right, and I'm gonna grab my little bag of water droplets. Now these do have to be glued on. Um, I believe there is um, a brand that makes them pre-glued, but you know what? Do you want to sit and pick those little sticker labels off the back of the little things that are as tiny as this? I don't think so. Now, they do come in an assortment of sizes. I have been using the bigger ones a lot, but I have taken and used a few of the tiny ones because there were, in the picture, there were um, little droplets of snow on our little, I don't know if he's a mouse or a beaver or what he is, but there were little droplets of snow. So I just took tiny little ones and I glued them onto his body. So we have that out. And here's, I picked a little fox to go on the front. And of course I picked a little fox label to hang off of the string once we get that done. And I am going to go and I'm going to grab, I have white ribbon. Now, my family is under strict orders from me not to throw away ribbons or any kind of fancy strings or tags that come off of packages <laughs> that they may buy and they might open because you will be surprised that you can actually reuse a lot of that stuff. And I thought what we might do is lay some of this white ribbon down here on the little area where we added our box bottom and kind of zhuzh it up that way. But now what I wanna do, what I have been doing is I've been finding the end of the paper and at the end of the paper is where I have started placing down my ribbon, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add some glue. And I've been using my PVA glue, which surprisingly has worked really well to hold the ribbon down. So let's see. I hope I'm not putting my foot in my mouth. Let's see if it'll actually hold this ribbon because I was not have not used this ribbon yet. And I'm gonna try and see how well it'll stick. Okay, so let's grab our ribbon and we'll just place it down. Now, I'm sure that the glue may show through as well, but we're not gonna worry about that. Oh, I should have actually slid it over. Oh, I'll just go in and cut that off. And yeah, we actually, my husband knows someone through his business. I'm gonna trim that off who um, installs screening. And I don't know if you heard, but we came through Hurricane Milton and the only real damage that we suffered on the house, at least, 
The mental damage to me has been astounding, but that's another story that I'll tell you afterwards. Um, they came and rescreened our lanai this morning. My husband called him to come and do, you know, give us an estimate. And when he got here, he said, you know, I can do the job for you. He, smart businessman, I must say. Um, I, he said, I have all the screening in the car. If you have cash, I will do the repair for you today and we can have it over and done with. So, yep, my Lanai screens are repaired. And so I can actually open my doors in this nice weather that Milton was kind enough to leave us with after he destroyed the state of Florida. Um, so, yeah, I can open my sliding glass doors and let some fresh air in the house. All right, let's finish putting our ribbon on here like so it doesn't seem to the glue doesn't seem to be showing through too badly so i'm not too worried and the ribbon seems to be whoop if i can grab a hold of it the ribbon seems to be sticking so i'm just gonna pull i try to leave it a little looser on the corners where it's rounding those corners so that it has a little bit of give um, for when we fold our bag because we don't want our ribbon to rip off. Okay, let's just give this a little snip. All right, and this way I don't have to keep playing with all the ribbon hanging off here. And I'm just going to snip it around here because I think that should reach around the back with enough of the little excess. So yeah, um, I have red ribbon left. I take ribbon and bows off of everything, which I'm sure if you are a crafter at heart, you probably do the exact same thing. So I have ribbon basically for free. Yeah, so if you haven't started doing that, start doing that. You might be very surprised at how much you can actually keep. That red ribbon, I think, came from a Christmas a couple of years ago. It was tied in a bow on some package of something that we bought. Because, you know, they want to make everything super pretty for the holidays. Okay, let's do that. And let's turn this over. And, yeah, oh. There's a little fly in here. That's what happens when you don't have screens. <laughs> and when you have dogs, uh, the dogs need to go in and out and the bugs come to visit. All right, so now I'm gonna grab my Fabri-Tac so that I can glue the ribbon to the ribbon. And of course, you know how Fabri-Tac behaves. It gets gloppy and stuff. And so I'm just gonna put as much as I think I need on here. And again, you want to start and stop your ribbon or your papers on the back of your bag just because you don't want anybody to kind of see your little handiwork when they first pick up the, the little gift here. Okay, so there we go. So now we have some white ribbon on here. Now, I'm going to add some of the beaded string as well. And for that, we're also going to need our Fabri-Tac. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to add our paper elements before we do that. So let's just put the cap back on the Fabri-Tac and put that aside because I don't want to spill it on anything. So now we have this little fox that came out of the woodland, wonderf wonderful woodland. I forgot the name already. And I thought he would look cute right about here. Now, an important factor to remember, when you are adding decorations, especially something like a little card or a little photograph, remember, you have a flap that's going to open and close. You don't want to hide your decoration under your flap. So make sure that you have enough room to add your decoration for when you open and close the flap. You can put a pencil line underneath, and this way you'll know how much distance you have to play with in order to add something decorative to the front of your bag. So I figured 
we can put our little fox right about there and we can still see our poinsettia. And so let's put some glue on the back of Mr. Fox and we'll glue him down to the bag. Now I do have a lot of scraps left over from making these bags. And in fact, what I'm gonna try to do because I need to make uh, 13 bags for Christmas treats for my family. And I'll see if I wanna make them for my coworkers. But I may try making a few out of the 12 by 12 cardstock. I'm just gonna push this down and push him down to make sure that he's stuck down really well. Okay, see how cute he looks? And it just adds a little something, you know? It's something to look at. It's something to touch and say, wow, that's pretty, really kind of cute. Wow, did you make that? That's so cool. And then what we're gonna do, we are going to add our little droplets now. Now I'm gonna grab two tools out. <laughs> this is my gem picker-upper, which um, it works. But I find that it's always my luck that usually when I dump the gems out, they're all upside down. So I also have my little reverse tweezers in case I have to turn any of these little buggers right side up. Like here, I have a few that are upside down and, oh, see, <laughs> it's not gonna let me correct it. Now, the thing is, you don't wanna overdo it with the gems, I mean, you, you can add as many as you want, but you just kind of want it to be a little highlight. So what I do is I go and I look and I say, wow, that's a little spot there that, you know, might be perfect for a little gem. And because these look like water droplets, um, you can kind of, you know, think about it that the water might be reflecting on the leaves of the plant. And so, yeah, we'll go around and we'll look and we'll see. Do I happen to have, did any little tiny ones come out? Yeah, there is a teeny tiny one and there's a medium sized one. So what I think we'll do is maybe we'll put like a little, oh, a medium sized one over here on the fox's fur where it kind of looks like it's a blend of fur and snow. And we'll highlight that little area and we'll just put that gem down there. And then there is a little spot here that looks like it might be snow. So we'll just put a little dab of glue. And these actually, I will link them. I was hesitant to buy them because they didn't get the best reviews, but most of the reviews were from people who said, oh, well, I thought they were stuck you know, that they had adhesive on the back. And now I don't like them because I have to uh, glue them down myself. And so, yeah, so we have three and I'm very anal about making sure that <laughs> we have an uneven number, I, I, odd numbers versus even numbers. And maybe we'll put a little one up on the top of his ear. Do I have a little, little one? No, uh, I'm just gonna use one of these. Nobody's going to complain. Are you going to complain? No. So there we have that one. And perhaps we'll put one right in the middle of the poinsettia. Okay. Because you can kind of still see the colors underneath once you put the gem down. Um, let me see. Yeah, see, this one has a little bit of a reflection. They are... Um, Oh gosh, what's the word I want? They are, um, not halogen, uh, rainbow. Is that the one? Yeah, they have a little bit of a rainbow reflection to them. Prism, maybe that's it. Okay, this is a little medium sized one and maybe we'll just put that one down in the middle. But yeah, see, now we added an odd number <laughs> of gems, a little assortment all around. Okay, and now what we'll do, we will put our pin back in our glue. And yeah, it takes probably about, I would say, all told, cutting the paper out and all of that stuff. I just forgot what I was looking for. Oh, the beading. Okay, see, this is how it comes. This I got in Hobby Lobby. 
and it's little beads that come on a string. I don't know if you can actually see, and they're like a sparkly rainbow, so they're kind of the same color as the little individual beads. And the Fabri-Tac holds them down very well, and because they're plastic, I think that the reason that the Fabri-Tac actually holds them down is because they melt into the Fabri-Tac, so we're just going to add a little line oops, of the beads onto our ribbon here, okay, like so. And I'm going to measure it, and I'm going to hold on to it, and I'm going to see. Eh, that probably looks like right about where we're supposed to cut it. It cuts very easily. You just cut on the string. I bought this, oh gosh, a couple of years ago, so I don't even know. I'm sure they have it available but I couldn't tell you exactly whether or not I'm right. And you'll notice that this is probably gonna be a little bit longer than we need it to be, but that's okay. After everything has dried, I will go back and I will trim off the excess. And let's just get this Fabri-Tac to kinda squeeze out here. And I am going to do my best to make a straight line. Again, what do I always say? It doesn't have to be perfect because it is handmade. And like Annette said, if people are going to be critical of you, then they don't need handmade gifts. Okay, so we have our line of Fabri-Tac. And I'm just gonna take, and the way I do it, I kind of roll it up into the Fabri-Tac and it kind of tends to stick right away because like I said, I think that what's actually happening is that somehow the plastic beads and the Fabri-Tac are reacting with each other. I'm just gonna tilt this up so I can make sure it's straight and that the plastic is actually melting into the Fabri-Tac. I don't think it will make it disintegrate in the long run, so I wouldn't hold, I wouldn't worry about it. And that little one on the end there doesn't seem like it has any glue under it. So I'm just gonna grab the Fabri-Tac back out and just put a little bit more on the tip there, the edge of the, the box, just give a little squeeze. And, oh, see I shifted it. That's okay. It'll go right back. Cause you know, the Fabri-Tac doesn't dry right away. It gives you a little bit of play. When I first started making journals, um, this was long before I even thought about being on YouTube. Um, Fabri-Tac was the only glue I used. And it was annoying because it would melt my nail polish. And so as I got more experienced and I learned more about adhesives, I started using other things. So there, you can see. All right, we just added a little something something. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to add our little gift tag onto here. First, let me put the lid on my glue. And it doesn't really matter where you punch the hole on here because it's gonna hang whichever way it wants. So generally, what I do is, am I unlocked? Nope, I'm locked. I will just decide a good spot to put the hole, but I wanna put the hole in far enough so that I can add a reinforcer to it. So I'll pick the emptiest area, like here, there's really nothing here. And I'm just gonna poke my hole, well, punch my hole with my crocodile. And then I am going to grab a reinforcement. Reinforcement. Okay, here we are. And like I said, I put them on the back just to make the tag a little bit more secure. You can see that little hole there. So I will just take, put my reinforcement around it so that my label doesn't rip off. And then, you know, on the back, you would write to and from and whatever. And then the reason that I didn't close up this end of my twine is because now I am going to 
put my little label on this end, and that's the open end of the twine that we doubled. And now I'm gonna tie a knot, and this is probably nothing spectacular to some people, but it's just something I thought I would show you. And I'll tie my little knot on my twine. So now even if my twine frays, it won't fall apart, and I have this end closed too, and now I have my little label on it, okay? And I realized that all these little gems are drying, but they do, the PVA, they kind of cling on quickly. So now what we're gonna do, whoops, is we are gonna close up our little treat bag. We're gonna take and we're gonna put our little label close to the top. So this way we have room to tie and we'll make sure that we have it all pulled through evenly. And then we're just gonna tie a little knot in here, okay? And put a little bow, like so. There you go, Nat, I got it again. Okay, and there's our little treat bag with our little label, our gift label, gift tag, okay? and all decorated, kind of nicey nice. You could, if you want to, go all the way around with the beads. I don't think it's necessary. The paper is so pretty on its own that it doesn't really need it. But yeah, there we go. So, okay. Now I did say in my last video that I was going to talk about a giveaway. Okay, I'm gonna move all this stuff. I don't wanna get the beads on the floor and in lieu of um, giving away something I make this time, I'm going to give away something that I have an extra of. I'm trying to reach 1,500 subscribers. I've been stuck at 1,350 for a while. So if I can get up to 1,500 subscribers, I am gonna give away this little stamp set. Okay, and it's made by a company called Woodware. And what happened was I ordered this set from scrapbook.com and I realized too late that I had ordered two. So in lieu of going through all of the trouble of sending it back, I said, you know what? I'm just gonna keep it because this will make a cute little giveaway for my subscribers. Because as you can see, the stamp is a tag, okay? So now you can stamp it and make your own tag, or you can add some um, texture and some interest to a tag that you may already have. Um, it has a little postage um, marking, a little grungy um, stamp here. It says first class and it has even the cutest little safety pin stamp. So yeah, I thought that that would be a good gift. And then this way, whoever wins it, if I decide to use mine in a video, we could do it together. Um, for those of you who are interested, um, the name of it is, it, the name and the item number is FRS747 and it's called the old paper tag. I don't know if it's still available. I mean, I only just got mine less than a month ago, but um, yeah. So let's rally around, folks. <laughs> let's try to get up to 1,500 subscribers. And as I said, I want to make some Christmas cards using this paper. You may remember, oh, excuse me, I get the hiccups, that back in February of this year, um, if I can figure out a way to link the video, I will. Um, I made a video where I made Valentine's Day cards using some of my die cuts and also um, papers from Tracy Fox's uh, kit that she had put out back in February. So I think I'm gonna try to do that again with the Christmas papers and use some of the images that I stamped while I was sitting around and waiting for Hurricane Milton to come and destroy Florida. Um, with that said, I told my husband I am now terrified to live in Florida and I really want to move back up north. 
And so he promised me that over the next couple of years, depending on how things go, we may just sell our house and we will be going back up north. It might break my heart because my daughter might not come with us. She has met someone that I know she really likes and he lives in Florida. So yeah, that, that could be a heartbreaking moment for me, but we are not getting any younger. And I don't think that dealing with hurricanes and tornadoes is something that I want to be doing when I'm in my 70s. So, yeah. Okay, guys. So, I hope you had fun with that. I hope you like the way we decorated. And like I said, just pull out. This was the other. These are also something that I pulled out. These are some silly um, Christmas buttons. I don't know where I got them from. But their little, oops, there it goes. There's a reindeer and a Santa Claus and um, what was this one? A snowman. So you could very easily add those to here. Um, this is the ribbon that I used. This is from Michael's. And like I said, I bought it. Um, I don't even remember one. And it's been sitting around and not being used. So I said, well, what the heck? I'll use that too. Was there anything else I pulled out? Oh yeah, my ribbon set I showed you that I cut off of packages. So I hope you had fun, guys. Please remember to like, subscribe, and comment. And I'm gonna send you lots of love and big hugs. And I might be back to make a video tomorrow um, in, a, in along with being off for the week for Hurricane Milton. I do actually have the day off tomorrow, which was the day we were supposed to have off anyway. So I might have time to maybe make another video or two. Okay, I'll see you then. Like, subscribe, comment. Let's get to 1,500. Okay, guys, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.